Welcome back to my Elm Creek adventure on Farming Simulator 22, day 9, with me, Mr. Sealy P. Happy December the 9th, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a great day so far. And if you haven't already, don't forget to do that advent calendar. That's the whole purpose. So, yesterday, after I left you, uh, I, did a, I did three contracts. And I'm going to have to, when I get home on Saturday, possibly Sunday, I'm trying to think, I'm going to do some testing, some more in-depth testing. Because the contracts uh, were two soybean and one corn. As you can see, the money has gone up. I was on just over 30,000, we're up to 38. But that said, I have at least two bits of equipment I'm going to use in a moment. Actually, three bits of equipment. Uh, will it do it? I'm sure potatoes didn't let me do it there, did it? It had to be next to it. I think it's this one here, it will come up. So, of the 94,000 litres of potatoes I had, um, Johnson's Farmers Market is paying the highest at the moment. It's not mega high, but it's, it's all right. So we'll offload one load, just one load at the moment. We'll head back. I've got two pallets of strawberries. Haven't quite got a pallet of um, lettuce yet. It's not far off, um, but we're almost there. So here's the thing. It has always been a commonly held um, idea, ideal, um, that when you're doing contract work, if you get to a point where you've taken all of the crop off the field, now if you're doing big contracts and you've got a lot of crop, that can be often difficult. Because if you haven't got anywhere to store it, you have to kind of take it to the wherever it needs to be taken to and start offloading it. It'll tell you how much percentage of, of um, what's required has been delivered. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting. It's the maths around it all. And the commonly held ideal has always been say always been from what I gather and from what I know that if you hit 84% complete on the contract which you can do if you've done all of it everything's off the field 84% um, complete and then all you've got to do is take your crop to wherever the sell point is at that point it would only require 75% delivered to get the contract complete now, I always thought that was 75% of the total crop you've taken off the field. I thought it was 75% of that yield. And the weird thing is, doing the maths earlier on, like if, you're, if you're doing a contract on a massive field and you've got hundreds of thousands of litres and you've got nowhere to store it, when you take your first loads and unload it and it says, you know, you've delivered, I don't know, 22% of what's required. And you kind of do the maths and you say, okay, well, I've delivered X amount, 22% complete which means I'm going to need and you, you kind of extrapolate up and you think okay I need to deliver at least this much which will leave me a bit over but the weird thing happens when you hit field cleared at 84% I hope I'm making sense when you hit 84% and the field is completely cleared something seems to change because what I did with the corn harvest and like I did with the potato harvest because I held back a load I thought to myself, well, okay, how much can I hold back and it still say contract complete? Now, my corn harvest, I had 23,121 litres um, of corn. That was everything off the field. Now, working at, I had to deliver 75% of that. 75% of that was 17,340 litres. So I thought, okay, well, I'll hold back a load. You know, I'll hold back, rather than deliver 17,000 litres, I'll hold back more. So I started off and I held back 10,000 litres, which meant I was only going to deliver 13,000, just over 13,000, of what I thought was going to be 17,000-ish. So I sent off the train. So this was a bit of testing, in a way, and I had saved it. I know it's probably a little bit dicey, but I had saved it. I sent off the train, and it said that the harvest was 70% delivered. So the weird thing is, it seems to be what's required, it tells you, is the percentage delivered. 
that's not necessarily what the yield of the of the field is. The two don't seem to be linked. Um, it, it came up 70%, so I thought, okay, if that's the case, I only need to deliver another 5% to complete this contract. So I ran it again, and the next time I delivered um, an extra 1,000. So I only kept 9,000 back. So I delivered... What was I delivering the end? I think it was 14,087 litres or something I delivered. And still, that was way lower than the, my calculated 17,000. So, delivered it, and it came up contract complete. So, I delivered 14,000 litres. I kept 9,000 litres. If you work out the percentages on those, I only delivered 61% of the total crop. I kept back 39% of the crop, which doesn't add up to the 75% that the contract requires. So the requirement seems to be a different amount to the actual yield of the field. I would say, well, so when I get home, I'm going to do some testing on this because that sort of belief that you need to live at 75%. And if you put all of your, your yield into a silo, especially the railroad silos we've got here, you stick them all into a silo and say, okay, well, this is what I've got total. You work out 75% of that and deliver it. You're actually doing yourself out of crop. You, you could deliver less so you can make more money. So as it's turned out at the moment, the weird thing is I don't remember doing one of these. I don't know how it's happened. Um, so I've got 79,000 litres of potatoes sitting there because I've just delivered some. The corn I had that I kept back, 9,034 litres, I've got that. I've got 4,340 litres of sunflower. I don't remember doing that. The wheat, that's off of, our, uh, off of um, Angie and Chris's field. Um, so yeah, we've got 9,000 litres sitting there. The third contract was a real dodgy one, though, because I had a problem. It's all contract related, actually. I'm going to get on with what I'm supposed to be doing. You'll see I've got two things of strawberries sitting here. All very lovely. And we should have one lettuce coming soon. When we've got the lettuce, we'll deliver the two strawberry and the one lettuce. I have hired a mulcher. I have hired a plough. I'm going to mulch this field and that field because they need to be mulched. You might as well get the 5% yield bonus. And I have hired um, at least a corn header for the harvester, which we'll get onto as we get a little bit further up towards lunchtime. I mean, to be fair, a lot of that early morning frost is already gone. So we can kind of get on with that. I'm going to mulch first. Like I say, I'm going to skip through a little bit, but I want to talk about this as we go. Um, so the problem with multiple contracts... That won't raise or lower. Why is that not... This tractor not allowed to raise the I'm sure I can't mulch the other way. So it's with a three-point link. wonder if I need to do it on the... Um... Oh. Oh, it's because I had it on track. Um, it's because it's the idiot in charge had it on tractor. <laughs> Are we mulching or not? I'm going to go a fair old lick. We'll take that. Yeah, so the problem you've got when you're doing multiple contracts, and I had two soybean, one corn. Both soybean harvests needed to be delivered to Goldcrest Valley. The problem we have now with multiple contracts and again, potentially another test I'm going to need to do, is if I did both of those harvests and put all of the soybean into the train to send off, how does it know which one it's completing? How, how does it just take all of it and say, OK, it's completed both? There is the risk, and I didn't want to take that chance, of it taking it all and saying, well, that was for one contract, contract complete, well done, and then the other one hasn't completed because technically it hasn't allowed for it. So I panicked a little bit. Like I say, I am going to have to do some further testing. So what I did instead, this is a bit dodgy, a couple of people have mentioned this, it only works if the price, if there's, an, if there's another sell point that's buying the product at a higher price. <laughs> because um, if you harvest the whole field and then fail the contract if you say cancel it says harvest failed it will then charge you for the missing crop it will charge you based upon the price it was going to get when you sold it so then you've got the crops there and you've then so that's yours now i suppose as long as you don't give the equipment back um, or you use your own equipment or however you want to go about it but 
So I had then, I think, 5,000 something litres of soybean and Johnson's Farmer's Market was paying way more than Goldcrest Valley was. So I took that 5,000 litres, I think it charged me 8,000 something was the deficit for the crop failure um, for not delivering it. And then when I sold it, I think I sold it for 13,000. So I made a profit. I, I shouldn't have done it. It's a really dodgy way of doing it. But if ever you're kind of a bit concerned, you think something might go wrong or, or there's an, a clash like that, I am going to like I'm going to do some more testing on it because I'm curious. I'm not sure how that's going to pan out. Um, but the multiple contract thing, whereas before it was always just one contract, so you'd stick it on the train, send it off if you had to do it by train. If you have to take it to another cell point, well, I suppose it's technically the same. If you've got two contracts that are going to the same cell point anywhere, how does it know which of those two contracts you're completing? You don't decide when you unload. So I'll have to look at that in a little bit more detail. I'm sure there are people out there that would have already done it and already tested um, and will know. Um, I haven't yet, and I just thought as I was doing it, it crossed my mind. I thought, hmm, okay. Now, I'm still a bit kind of, not reeling, that's the wrong word, but the whole cost of workers. I was thinking yesterday that I hadn't done very much in the episode. I mean, I'd done, I'd done some farming, I'd done some bits like I'm doing now. I'm um, just having a bit of a chat. And the episode, I finally got one about 30, was it 33 minutes yesterday? We finally got one. Um, but the thing about it is what I would normally do, because I've got three fields here, two I need to mulch, that one in front of me I need to plough, they need liming, I would just grab the bits of equipment, I would lease it, and like, this is small, and the plough's small, I've only got small equipment, I haven't got no, big horsepower, and I haven't got a huge amount of money, so I've tried to lease sort of cheaply, I would set workers off, I'd have like three workers going, get some guys from the lo uh, local area, and um, get them helping me, I can't afford to, it, it's, um, you know, I've got 45 grand sitting there, when I say I can't afford to, the the benefit of getting them to do the work versus what it's costing me to do it, I'd rather do it myself. Um, because we're starting off small, it is starting from scratch and we're getting our bits as we go, the money coming in is small amounts each time. I can't be chucking that away um, on on workers. So, yeah, I don't know, it's a weird one. It's, it's just got me a little bit kind of, well, how do I go about it? So what I will do is I will see when this field is mulched, and that's how I'm going to do that one there. That should give us the, the yield bonus, 5%. And then I will see you when I'm going to start ploughing. I'll plough them, and then before the end of the episode, what I want to do is I want to have them ploughed. I want to, if I can, because I can see directly onto a ploughed field. Um, I want to get the corn harvest done over there. We'll add to the corn we've got from the contract, and then we'll wait for a good price on corn. We can sell that. That sunflower, again, I honestly can't remember doing the sunflower harvest. Obviously had done, and had some left over. Um, we'll, we can sell that when the price comes up, and the potatoes I'll keep ticking away. Every time we get a fairly good price, I'll get rid of a load, uh, and we'll, we'll kind of tick over like that. And then what I'll probably do, I'm just thinking next episode will be, do I need to, the thing about it is, we'll talk about that when we do it. Do we need to prepare a seed bed? Well, seed bed preparation, a lot of it seems to be, depending on the equipment you use, a lot to do with weeds and weed growth because I can if I've got a direct drill I can just direct drill straight oh, there's snow coming up I can direct drill onto what I'm doing now if I plow I can seed straight away if I haven't got a direct drill if I've got a regular seeder or a planter I can do it straight into a ploughed field so do I need to do a seed bed it doesn't gain you anything you don't get a yield bonus for seed bed prep mulching you do but seed beds you don't that just comes down to a look you know it, and, and that kind of adding that extra realism of, you know, to get a really nice seed bed for putting your seeds down, you should. Do you have to? No. So do I throw in those extra steps and say, OK, once I've ploughed then, I'm going to cultivate. But the problem is after ploughing, I'll have stones. So do I seed and then roll them in? I haven't done any rolling yet. I could do, couldn't I? Maybe we could use the roller because that should give us a yield bonus. I assumed it was by removing the, the stones would give you the yield bonus. Um, and I pushed them in before I seeded, but apparently you're supposed to seed and then you, you roll over the top to give yourself a better seed bed again. That's what gives you the bonus pushing the stones in. But I'm still dubious about the fact that when you use a seeder, if you've got stones in the ground, it does say that stones can damage your equipment. So which way around do you do it? It's, it's a weird, bit of a weird system. Um, another thing I was going to say just before I leave you and we move on to the ploughing section of this video is... Um, the repair 
I know both of these vehicles were second hand. Oh, well, that's what I was going to do. Check the second hand vehicle in the market as well. Because we might have something like a cultivator or something we can buy really cheap. Um, this one I haven't used so much, but yesterday I was using the John Deere quite a lot when I was doing the contract work. The repair has plummeted. I repaired them both yesterday. And it's, it's dropped by over a half. I know it did say if you buy a second hand vehicle that needs repair, you kind of get that there'll be that rolling damage that it will get worse quicker but my kind of thinking on that is but if you've repaired it completely I suppose there's that thing you fix one thing or something it puts a strain on other parts that might be weaker and that kind of thing I guess I kind of see where they're coming from but it has dropped like a stone um, so yeah okay I'm gonna carry on mulching I shall see you when we do some flowering Fields 45 and 46 are both done. I'm going to do the small one down here. Mulching was all completed as well. Uh, I did also, it was weird I didn't get charged for painting. I suppose the painting is not so bad. So I just filled in the gap between here so it's all kind of mud, earth across, uh, and a tiny little strip here. The rest of this will all be ploughed. It will then be, when I do seed it, like I said, this one will all be grass which will give us something to mow and use if we need to. Uh, this is a little bit trickier here, I'll just turn the plough. So yeah, what we'll do is I'll get this one done. And obviously because I'm on times three, I'm not on times five, I did start a little bit later in the day today because I was very conscious of the fact as well that every episode I've done so far, every day, we've kind of finished the episode and it's only been either just before lunchtime or just after lunchtime. We haven't really done anything in the afternoons. 
but I'm also very conscious of the fact there's a risk okay, because it's winter it's going to get dark very early I don't want to sort of chug away ploughing and quite merrily carrying on doing what I'm doing and then find that all of a sudden it's dark and I've got to get that corn harvest done so I think I'll get onto the corn harvesting I'll get that that's my, my own field, my field we'll get that done and we'll get it put into the silo I've left the mulcher over there as well because I want to mulch that and that I think, actually, so there's both showing dark purple, they're both ploughed now. If we go across to our soil composition, you'll see the ploughing state's gone off of here, but they do need lime. Uh, I don't think they've got any fertilising state on them, no. Um, so we are going to lime. I'm going to get one of the small rear-mounted fertiliser or lime spreaders. Field 48 that I'm going to harvest is maximum fertilising. That's fantastic. And doesn't show that it needs... Oh, mine just had corn in it. So once the corn's out, that will need ploughing. So yeah, that I'll probably have to do off camera. Oh, I did lower it down. Um, I'll have to do it off camera anyway. I know these furrows are going to be going, going in opposition to each other. Just trying to get around the edge first, but... We're all good. I just, I don't know if the snow's going to settle. I mean, it's, it's a bit weird. When, when we saw the... Um, Again, I guess it's probably to do with the setting. I honestly thought just having seasonal growth turned off just affects the seasonal growth aspect of things. Some people had said, yeah, there's a glitch, it, snow won't settle. Other people have said, well, they've had snow, they've, had, they've cleared snow and done snow ploughing bits and bobs and that kind of thing. Um, but also on this map, when they showed the visuals, they said there'd be something cool to see in the winter. Because I think over at the um, where the cave system is, you can go down to the caves, I think the water's supposed to freeze and the waterfall and all that kind of stuff. So we might have to take a whiz over there and have a look at some point. I don't think it's going to. Again, that could just be because I've got seasonal growth off. But, I, yeah, I would have thought that should only affect the growth, really. Not all the other winter settings, but I don't know, maybe it does. We'll see if we get any snow. Um, and on my, on my test map, I did... Not on the roads, none of it settled on the roads though, which was weird. I had snow around all the verges, it looked fantastic, but none of the roads had me. I thought the whole point was you go out snow ploughing and snow blowing to clear the roads. So again, not sure, that'll probably have to be a, you know, another test with seasonal growth on, and we'll see what happens. I, I don't really, you know, as I said on my earlier kind of guide to videos, there are so many new facets to this game just looking at doing all the soil work the various different cultivators the fact the standard cultivator you've got standard cultivating shallow cultivating and you've got stubble tillage and you've got mulching and all, all the things that we didn't have before and all these new processes all affect each other slightly in different ways and it's um you know and also the same as it was this is no different to F when fs19 released you are second guessing yourself constantly because things that aren't working or you don't think are working you start asking yourself is it because of it i've done a setting is there something i haven't set correctly is it because i've turned something off that should be on or vice versa or is it it is glitched and it needs to be updated and you can spend ages going through testing everything turning settings on and off and finding nothing does anything and then the patch gets released and it's all of a sudden it's fixed so it could just be it needs it needs the patch um to come out <laughs> And then maybe all these things will be sorted. But like I say, it could it could still be a setting. I'm not saying it is just that. I would just like to have some snow on the ground. I was really looking forward to at least some point in December. Weirdly, uh, yeah, uh, doing some snow ploughing or snow clearing as part of this as well. I thought that'd be incredibly festive. And like I said, I really hope someone brings out a Christmas tree before now. And because I want to do that Christmas Eve thing of going out and getting the Christmas tree. And I just thought that'd be really nice to do. If there isn't one, I don't want to. I mean, we could go out and we can still get a tree. We just won't be able to decorate it, will we? But we can still go to the, the woods. So, yeah, we can. We can go to the forest and we can still cut a tree down, bring it back, can't we? That'd be a nice thing to do for our Christmas Eve episode. I might even stream that one. That might be quite nice, mightn't it, to stream it. We'll do a few bits and bobs and wish people a happy Christmas. And Yeah, you know what? 24th, I think we might stream. Oh no, hang on. Oh, I'll think about it. I know, it's because I'm supposed to be heading to my uh, heading to my brother's Christmas Eve. So yeah, time-wise, that might be a little bit tricky. 
We might be alright, because I have been streaming around lunchtime, which haven't I? So yeah, we could do. We could do. It's all just ideas at the moment. <laughs> As you can imagine. Uh, right, what I'm going to do, I think, I'm going to... No, I'm not going to hurry up. I'm going to turn that off. Because it does seem to be getting dark. It's 2.35. <laughs> Snow is still coming down. I'm going to get this started. The frost has all gone off the ground that was there this morning. Like I say, the mulch is still there. We are going to mulch and plough. I hired the small Ziegler header because the Ziegler header was quite cheap to... Um, Oh no, I forgot that. You idiot. Uh, I can't, can I? Because that will seriously reduce our yield. But I don't know if the snow's going to stop. Do I just get the field cleared and take a hit on the yield? You know what I'm going to do. take a hit. I'll get the field cleared. And I can get it mulched and prepped and we can do what we're going to do with it next. Because I, I don't know what the yield would have been on this field anyway. So I know I'm going to take a hit. Now, I was told, I'm sure I read somewhere, that harvesting in the rain, in this case the snow coming down, is a 20% deficit. But someone else commented and said it's 50 50% seems very high. I'm sure I read somewhere it was 20%. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. Check that. Let's go down to that one there. Is it saying anything about harvesting? Seasonal farming, snow. Snow can be toggled on and off and impacts. See, I've got my snow turned on. If we go to is it this one. Yeah, snow is definitely on. So that should be separate to seasonal growth. Oh, I don't know. It's all just so complicated. Um, transport, AI workers, icons. I can't remember where I read it, you know. Hmm. That's all sort of stuff on improving yield. Ah, oh, cultivating, sown, and harvesting. Does it say anything about it in there? Common harvestable header attached. Unfold the harvester. Do unload your harvest. No, it doesn't say. There must be something about it somewhere. Anyway, regardless, like I say, I don't know what the yield should have been on this field. And in all honesty, this is a bonus. Um, part of me buy my own first field that belongs to me and doesn't belong to um, Chris and Angie is that it's mine and this had a, a crop in it already so this is a bonus on top of buying the field it doesn't really matter what the yield is off of it I suppose getting a maximum yield would have been more beneficial but we'll add this to the corn we've already got in storage if it's only a couple of thousand litres so be it and then let's say what we'll do is I don't anticipate Filling this harvester. Don't want to catch those snoots on the ground. say something as well for all you childish people out there like me and like Mrs. Sinfi I don't know if anyone noticed it. I'm drawing attention to it now so if you didn't know as you will know now um, when I said about only having small equipment Mrs. Sinfi was trying so hard not to laugh out loud at that point she I didn't even notice I, I didn't even realize but I hadn't said it in that context I was talking about my farm equipment which is oh dear Time wise, 
Um, I think I said I was going to end with harvest on here. We'll see what we get off of it. But oh, we're going to get more than a couple of thousand litres, aren't we? I think what I might do is. Might sell. Did I, did I say that already when I was doing the ploughing? I can't remember if I did or not. Whether or not to sell the sunflower I've got because I didn't even realise I had it. Oh no, the price has just nosedived. Yesterday, the price for sunflower was. I know there's there's the chart. If we do show price fluctuation, you can see the price fluctuation. Now, obviously, we're in December, <laughs> so the price is down somewhat. Um, but it was sitting at 1,700 and something um, at, was it Johnson's Farmer's Market? So I thought, well, that's the result. And obviously that's all plummeted now. So I won't be doing that. I won't be selling that on. Never mind. I was really hoping by, by now as well without the full... Um, lettuce palette so we can take that as well we'll get there much as I'm really enjoying this and I am really enjoying this I, I like that back to basics back to sort of that small equipment build up gradually you know I've always done that thing of on each map and this is going to be a lot harder on FS22 finding that one thing you know there's always on a map there's always that one thing that pays really well um, and I've, I've mentioned it before you know the silage in doing silage bales is always a great way to get going um, you can get started on silage bales cut a load of grass make a load of money uh, and you can, you can do all right on some maps it was wood chips on other maps it was other things you know and this is completely different because this is a real you know it is a slow burn it's a proper start from scratch we're building up really gradually contracts aren't paying out massive amounts we have done all right with the logging we did all right with getting all those extra potatoes i did all right with getting all that extra corn the other day as well <laughs> small victories and we are gradually sort of climbing the ladder i think the next thing will be to buy a harvester this one is leased at the moment but it's only 55 grand to buy so i think if we can get a couple of good contracts in maybe or if i get a good price for the, the corn and the potatoes and stuff that I've got in storage if I kind of sold everything we could get ourselves our own harvester that does mean that any harvesting contracts moving forward I don't have to borrow equipment I've got my own trailer we'll have our own harvester so it will all be profit at that point because I'm losing a little bit cultivating jobs I've got a long list of cultivating jobs to, to do if we go down to contracts we go all the way back up to here we've got quite a few cultivating jobs to do there are still a load of harvesting jobs to be done uh, I did think about, because I've done potatoes, there are a couple of sugar beet ones, so what I might do on one of the episodes is we'll take on, I think there's two, there might be three sugar beet harvests, we'll take on all three, oh no, see that's the problem again, I need to do that test, well, maybe that'll be the time to do it, we can do it as part of the episode, we could do a kind of live testing sort of thing, lease or borrow the equipment for one of them, and the other two harvests don't borrow the equipment, and we'll use the one set of equipment for all three harvests, We'll do all of the sugar beet and see if they're all the same cell point. Can can it determine? I don't, I don't see how it can. Can it determine which? If you just deliver a load of sugar beet, how does it know what contract you're trying to complete? How does it know whether you've got any left over or not? Or will it just take what it needs for the first one, then for the second, then for the third? I, I'm just I'm not convinced by that, you know. But that'd be something we could we could like say do a kind of a live test ish. So maybe on one of them we'll, we'll do some sugar beating. Well, I think getting our own harvester will be the next step up. We've got two tractors now. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the market as well. Uh, so the uh, for sale market, use vehicles, but it's nothing much of interest for me anyway, at least today. Right, it's going to take a little longer. Actually, I think it'll be a bit more than I thought. Just imagine if I'd have got the full new and I wasn't taking a hit for the rain. Well, the snow. The solid rain. Then we'll see where we're at. I'll get the rest of that ploughing done. 
and then tomorrow on the 10th I think we're going to be stone picking stone picking leaves a nice seed bed actually I don't think I'll cultivate again we'll, we'll do the stone picking and then it will be liming and at some point we'll get the seed from the ground but all these things do take days and that's what, I'm, that's what I mean when I say about I'm really liking doing it this way doing it day by day and having the time turned up I probably could have it on times five is that harvesting a field and then ploughing the field and then cultivating if you're going to do that or stone picking or then seeding or liming these aren't things that you can't do an entire field all those processes in one day that's not how it would work if I had it set on one day months then that day is representing an entire month and yeah you can do because it's a you know you've, you've brought it all down to a kind of microcosm of, of the real world so you're doing a month's worth of work in one day you can get away with it but daily work it doesn't kind of work that way we are doing it more old school Twenty-five to four. We are done. Not quite a full load, but that's not bad though. Five thousand four hundred and twelve. I wasn't expecting more than two or three thousand litres because I was going to take a hit. Uh, we will put this in the silo. Uh, the corn I'd left from that other contract's over nine thousand, so we should have yeah, just under fifteen, sixteen thousand. I suppose something to do now would also be to check. We're looking. Still haven't got one. What's it saying? 141. We're not quite. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow morning we'll have one. I don't know. We'll see. Fingers crossed. We've got those two, although they're going to freeze overnight. Might as well keep them fresh, wouldn't it? <laughs> we could freeze our strawberries. How are we looking? Uh, and we've got 115. Also, we might have a third one by tomorrow as well. I do like the animations on these now. It's absolutely fantastic. So, corn, 14,446 litres, sunflower, 4,314, and wheat, 3,695. So, the harvester will need to go back. Let's put the pipe in. I need to finish off, definitely need to finish off ploughing that. That needs to be done. And then, like I say, tomorrow we'll see what we're doing with our fruit and veg. I want to pick the stones. We'll get all the stones out of here. That will give us a nice enough seed bed and we'll lime as well, we'll get that done. I need to mulch the field we've just harvested. The other thing I am curious about is for that. Actually, should we check what about corn prices? Because if the corn's looking pretty good, maybe we could sell all of that. Oh, feed and grain, 721. That's all right, that's not a bad price. It's still climbing, but of all of them, that's definitely the highest. You know what? I think we'll take our oh Goldcrest Valley 412 <gasps> potatoes. Actually, you know what? I could sell all the rest of that by train, couldn't I? I've been getting a bit frustrated with how long it's taken the train to arrive. So. Um, yeah, the 4,000 litres of potatoes I had in the silo over there, I moved up to that silo, so it is all in one place. Should we just send it all off to Goldcrest Valley? I mean, it might go a little bit higher than that. I think we will. Right, I'm going to take this back. I will see you over at the, um, the grain silo. You can just see it off in the distance there. Humongous building. I'll get the train, we'll put it all on, and we'll send it off and we'll see what we get and that's where we'll be sat ready for tomorrow now December the 10th I'm not sure I'm going to be totally honest with you whether or not when I say the next episode like tomorrow it may be the 11th is the next time I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a video done on the 10th so the next video may be day 11 no. No, I'll try my best. We'll, we'll try to get one up in the tent. Yeah, I'll try my best. That's all I can promise. That was good timing. Literally, as I got here, um, the crossing was just about to close and the train was just arriving. So that's good. Let's turn it on. 
So it's the cover open on our first cabinet carriage. Let's back up and see. Probably need to be. It is open. Start filling. Open. Potatoes. Close the cover. Let's send it on its merry way. Do I want to sell it? Yes, please. Um, answer me a question. How was that 1,939 leasing costs? I pressed the lease, it arrived. I did not have that over an hour. That's what? But we made plenty of money selling it, so we're up to 78 grand. That's a good way to end the episode. Financially secure, at least for another 24 hours. <laughs> until I go and buy something frivolous and stupid, like I often do. Uh, we'll see tomorrow what's available in the uh, used items, the sale products, and um, we'll get all the rest of the farm work done. We're still we're cracking on. I'm picking up contracts, we're doing work around the farmyard. Uh, next, like I say, Harvester, I think, is going to be the next thing. I've got enough to buy it now, but it will leave us... I'll just worry about, you know, leasing equipment and stuff I need. So, uh, yeah, I will see you tomorrow, hopefully, if not the 11th. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.